Hey, good evening, everyone. It's Chris here with your Saturday night thingy. It's good to be with you. Good to see you all with me tonight. Um, I'm coming to you tonight from inside the Bible. And I see we're in the, the 13th chapter of Luke. And it says here in verse 29, it says, people will come from east and west and from north and south and they'll recline at the table in the kingdom of God. People from, got to get this, my directions right. I don't know which way I'm facing in this. <laughs> people from the east and the west and the north and the south, all kinds of people from all points of the compass. They'll come and they'll recline at the table in the kingdom of God. See, the beauty of this green screen is that I can put myself wherever I want, east, west, north, south. I can put myself in a rural village in Congo. I can put myself in Mexico, in Myanmar, in Paris, in Singapore. This Sunday, tomorrow, is World Communion Sunday. And it's one of those days in the church that makes me stand in awe of God. I stand in awe as I think about how all Christians everywhere on earth will be doing the same thing, sharing Holy Communion together. And it makes me realize how vast and how diverse God's children are. All of us in cold places, hot places, rich places, poor places, Christians of all different colors, speaking all different languages, in big cathedrals and small churches, those who worship outdoors under trees or in their houses, those who have to worship secretly, right? With the drapes closed because, because their faith exposes them to danger. And even here in Cedar Falls at First United Methodist Church and most of the other churches here in Cedar Falls will all be doing this in our own places, but together, right? Sharing the sacrament of Holy Communion. The diversity of the people in the church is nothing short of amazing, at least to me. Um, now, the word diversity, it can, be, it can be a difficult one to work with because it's connected to a social and a cultural movement that not everyone's on board with. This past week, I had the opportunity to sit with, with Gwen Berry, who's the chief diversity officer at UNI. And uh, we recorded a video uh, that we used at Fusion this last week. Um, check it out if you haven't seen it yet. Now, Gwen and I knew each other years, years, years ago uh, when we each had different jobs. But, you know, we haven't really crossed paths in decades. And so it was, it was fun to, to get her into the studio. It was fun to reconnect. Um, since, since I saw her last, she's earned some letters to put after her name. Uh, and she's got a higher level job now, and, and she's got some grandchildren. So, so we celebrated that. Now, Gwen is a black woman, and I am a white man. Our careers are different, our lives are different, and so it's not surprising that we have some different perspectives, maybe on diversity and on uh, diversity as a social movement. But you know, it also isn't surprising that we share some perspectives too because there are some basic concepts of fairness, of, of decency, and dare I even say love of fellow people that, that we certainly agree on. You know, when it, comes to, when it comes to diversity and when it comes to working toward full inclusion of, of diverse peoples, some people are against that idea. Others kind of like the idea, but they're not sure how to handle the implementation, and, and still others are ready to take big, bold steps right now. You know, one of the points of understanding that came from my session with Gwen is that diversity is going to happen, at least on the ethnic front. And, you know, we're, we're, we'll get some new numbers when this year's census is tabulated, but there's, there's a browning of America going on, and that's, that was Gwen's term, not mine. Uh, and it's related to the mixing and the moving of our fellow Americans and also of, of immigrants. And the trends are pretty clear that people who are accustomed to being in the majority may not remain so for much longer. 
And so while discussions of diversity might leave some of us feeling like a particular political agenda is being forced upon us, it's actually in our best interest to at least come to the table, to have the discussions, and to, to be sure we're doing our best job understanding each other, and making room for each other, and maybe even finding ways to encourage and enable each other's successes, because that makes for stronger, safer communities, right? It's better for all of us in the long run. Malachi 2.10 reminds us, have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us? Why then are we faithless to one another, profaning the covenant of our fathers? But enough of that. Let's, let's talk about what happens when God's people from one place encounter God's people from another place. You know, I've had some experiences like that in my life. I hope you have too. If not, seek some out, right? Because each one of those experiences has left me feeling blessed and enriched. A few years ago, Lisa volunteered to serve as a mentor for a Burmese immigrant who was new to the area. And Lisa and, and Clara worked on English, and they worked on how to navigate around the area. And at the end of that mentorship, Clara invited us to her apartment, where she and her husband cooked some authentic Burmese food for us. It was an amazing and delicious cross-cultural encounter, and, and, and I was blessed, and I was enriched by it. And then when, when we went to Palestine in Israel a couple years ago, we, we mixed with people of different faith traditions. We, we walked their streets. We ate their food. We saw some, some bits and pieces of how their lives are the same as ours and how they're different from ours, very different. And I was blessed and I was enriched by that trip. And I can't wait to go back. I honestly can't believe I haven't been back yet. And you know, I've been to Africa a couple of times with our Nigerian partnership, and, and I stay in contact with, with a couple of those folks. And, and their lives and their culture are very, very different from ours. And it was an adventure for me to step out of the first world and to be immersed in the developing world for a while. And because of that experience, I have a different understanding of the world than I ever would have had had I never left the United States. My contact with our African brothers and sisters continues to bless me and, and enrich me and change the way I think. I love the diversity of God's people. I love the places, I love the histories, the languages, and especially I love the food. John celebrated this diversity too in his, in his vision, his revelation, saying, And behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne. That was John's vision. You know, we, we all have a lot to learn about each other. We have, we have things to discover. We have, we have sameness to celebrate. We've got some differences that might be difficult for us to resolve. But tomorrow is World Communion Sunday. World Communion Sunday. If you come to church here, we'll go through the liturgy and you'll be sent home with a little, a little wafer thing and a shot glass because that's the safe way to do it right now. If you join us on the live stream, you can bring your own elements your own bread and juice, whatever, right? The fruit of the earth and the fruit of the vine. And when you do that, think about all the other people of God all over the world, bringing their confessions, their repentance, just like we will, their praises to God in all those languages and bringing the bread of their place, right? The French baguettes, a Russian black bread, Indian naan, a Mediterranean pita, a Hokkaido milk bread, uh, a lalo from, from Djibouti, or maybe even just good old Wonder Bread, right? It's World Communion Sunday. People will come from east and west and north and south, and they'll recline at the table in the kingdom of God. They're our brothers and sisters. We welcome them, we celebrate them, and we praise God for including all of us in his family. 
So that's what I have for you tonight. That's, that's the thingy. I'll see you tomorrow morning, either in person or on the live stream. We're live at 8.30 and 10 o'clock. Jenna and Keisha are doing the kids' Sunday school story live tomorrow. It's not recorded, their thing. They're doing it absolutely live, probably 9.35-ish, 9.40-ish. Um, I don't know what room they're going to be in, where they're going to broadcast from, or what they're going to say. So uh, tune in with me, and we'll all watch it together. So until tomorrow morning, have a great Saturday night.